All right, so this is section 5.2 of Math 146. Today we're going to be talking about the law of signs. Um, <clears throat> this is actually going to go kind of hand in hand with another one, which is going to be in 5.3 called the law of cosines. Both of these are going to be used in order to do what is called solving a triangle, meaning finding all of the missing parts, whether you're finding the missing sides or the missing angles. And these are going to be done specifically for what are called oblique triangles. An oblique, write that correctly, oblique triangles. And an oblique triangle basically is a non-right triangle. So you've got a couple of different choices there with an oblique triangle. You can have all of the angles within the triangle being acute or less than um, 90 degrees, or you can have a triangle where two of the angles are acute and one is obtuse, meaning greater than 90 degrees. But the general idea here is to solve an oblique triangle. These are going to be non-right triangles. For example, if we know that we have a right triangle and you have any two sides of the right triangle, you can find the third side. <clears throat> and then we can use some basic um, SOHCAHTOA in order to find um, the angles within the triangle that are not the 90 degree angle. Well, this is gonna be something where you don't have any of those circumstances. Now you still have to be given some information and we're gonna start off, there's really four different cases. Um, the law of signs, is probably the easiest one to know as far as the formulas are concerned because the law of sine states that if I were to take the sine of an angle A and divide it by its opposite side, which we'll call A, little a, that's going to be equivalent to the sine of angle B divided by its opposite side, lowercase b, which is also equivalent to the sine of capital C divided by its opposite side, c. So in order to kind of give you an idea what that's looking like, so again, we're going to just sketch some kind of a triangle here. And what we'll say is that this right here is a, that's angle a, this one over here is angle B, and then this one up here is angle C. Well, what you've got is you've got an associated side opposite of A, we call lowercase a, a side opposite of capital B, we call lowercase b, and then opposite of um, angle C, which we call lowercase c. Of course, it's hard to tell the difference between those two things other than the size of the letter, um, but that's how these triangles are formed. <clears throat> so, these are all proportional, okay? Uh, meaning that the ratios are equivalent to each other. So sine of A over lower, little a equals sine of B over little b equals sine of C over little c. Ultimately, you need to be given three pieces of information. And in order to use the law of sines, you need to be given any one set. In other words, I have to either be given capital A and lowercase a or capital B and lowercase b, or capital C and lowercase c, and then any one of the other pieces. So <clears throat> in order to use law of signs, that's what you're looking at. Now, the book goes through like um, some old geometry based stuff where it's like angle side angle and side angle angle and, and side angle side and side 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 and stuff like that. I just prefer to think of it as if you have any one side and its um, associated angle, and then any other piece. You can use the law of sines, and that's what we're gonna see. Um, the first case will probably be the simplest case um, that we use the law of sines. <clears throat> and that would be a case where, let's say that we have a triangle where they tell us that capital A is 40 degrees, capital B is 60 degrees, and lowercase a is 4. 
<clears throat> so if you want to kind of sketch what that would look like, you can do that. It's not absolutely necessary in this particular case, but why, why not? And again, this is a sketch. This is not going to be completely accurate. Um, but we'll say that this is our 40 degree angle. They tell us the opposite side of that is four. And then they tell us that angle B is 60 degrees, which we can put here. <clears throat> of course, knowing those two angles, we know the third angle because they have to all add up to 180 degrees. So if I'm going to be solving this, that's probably the easiest place to start. Let's find capital C. Well, that's just going to be, let's see, 40 and 60 is 100, so C has to be 80 degrees. And we can fill that in over here. Again, the sketch is not necessary, but sometimes it helps, so I'll put it over here for now. So now I have all three angles and one of the sides. I can use this in order to find the other pieces. Ultimately, I need to find lowercase b and lowercase c. Lowercase c will be opposite of the 80. Lowercase b will be opposite of the 60. So let's go ahead and use our formula to figure this out. So according to this, we know that the sine of A, sine of 40 degrees, divided by side A, which is 4, is going to be equivalent to, and now I can use either one to find B or C at this point. Let's go with B. Let's just go alphabetical. If I want to find <clears throat> lowercase b, I will take the sine of angle B, which in this case was 60, and divide it by lowercase b. So now we can use this equation right here to solve for b. You can either think of this as a cross multiplication, multiplying both sides by um, the common denominator of 4b, whatever you want to do in order to solve this. If we cross multiply, you would get b times the sine of 40 equals 4 times the sine of 60. And then to solve for B, you would divide both sides by the sine of 40. So B is going to be 4 sine of 60 divided by the sine of 40. And of course, we're using degrees, so make sure if you're doing this, your calculator is in degree mode, because otherwise it will not, uh, not come out correct. Um, and then when you plug this into your calculator, now this is another thing I want to mention. Um, don't plug these things in and then start to round early. In other words, don't set this up like we did here and then type in sine of 40 and put some kind of a rounded decimal on top and then type in sine of 60 and put a rounded decimal on top before you go ahead and solve for B. If you do that, if all the values are rounded as you go, then your answer at the end is going to be off. So now we can plug that directly into the calculator, which I'm not going to pull up to do here. I think you can probably handle that. That's going to give you approximately 5.39. So there's B. And now technically, that I, now that I know B, because <clears throat> that's the other one of the other pieces that I'm missing, I could use that to find C. But again, that's a rounded value. So let's not use B if possible. Let's just go back to the value that we know and that would be the a value so we can find little c now by doing the sine of 40 divided by 4 so we're going to start off with that again that was given so it's known and then to find c we'll do the sine of we found angle c to be 80 degrees divided by lowercase c and then it's the same idea we'll cross multiply divide and solve for c so we get that C sine of 40 equals 4 sine of 80. And then to solve for C, we'll divide by sine of 40. So C is going to be 4 sine of 80 divided by sine of 40. And then we'll plug that into the calculator and you end up with 6.13. And verify that all of your answers make sense. In this case, they do make sense because C should be our longest side considering it's opposite of the largest angle. And it is, it's 6.13 where the other two sides are four and 5.39. And four should be the smallest side because it is opposite of the smallest angle. So all of this works out. So in closing here, C is 80 degrees. 
lowercase c is 6.13 and lowercase b is 5.39. So we have solved the rest of that oblique triangle, found all the missing parts. All right, so for the next one, I'm not actually going to work out the entire example. <clears throat> But let's say this was the information that we're given, and you'll see why I'm not going to work it out in a second. We're going to be given that A is 35 degrees, B is 15 degrees, and lowercase c is 5. So once again, if you were just to kind of sketch what this triangle might look like, maybe something like that. It's not the best triangle ever, but... Um, so we'll put A down here in the lower left, we'll say that that's 35 degrees. Up here, we'll say that B is 15 degrees, which makes, let's see, that would be lowercase a, because that's opposite of the 35. This is lowercase b, because that's opposite of the 15. So this has to be lowercase c, and we are missing the angle in between right here, which would be capital C. Um, <clears throat> so I said what you have to have is one angle and its opposite side. Well, that's not what they gave us here. However, and I hope that you can see this, we can find the missing angle once again, just like we did in the first one, simply by figuring out what the sum of all these things have to add up to be 180. So if I've got 35 and 15, that's 50. So that means C then would have to be 130 degrees. Now that I have that, I can use lowercase c and my capital C for my angle in order to set up the law of sines to do the other two pieces, to find little a and little b as far as the missing sides. So now we're back to exactly the same type of problem that we just did. Um, <clears throat> so they might not always give you what looks to be the exact circumstance. They gave us, in this case, two angles <clears throat> and, and technically... Um, um, I actually forgot to label that lowercase c, and they gave us the side in between. And that's perfectly fine. Anytime you're given two angles, technically they've given you the third one, so you always have all three at that point. So really you just need one side. All right. <clears throat> There's another circumstance that's going to come up with the law of signs, and this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, it's what's called the ambiguous case. And there's going to be specific information that's given to us. And we actually have to figure some things out here. This is probably the most challenging one to do. If it makes sense to you, then you'll be able to figure this out. Um, if not, it's a bunch of formulas that you're going to have to, um, to remember. But the ambiguous case is a case where they give you a specific set of information. And one of three things could happen. You could have one triangle. Okay, well, you're thinking, okay, well, they're telling me it's a triangle. Well, not necessarily. You could technically get two triangles out of the information that's given, or it is actually possible that you have no triangles, and it's just not possible to have the circumstances that they gave. So let's take a look at how that actually might work out. So this is going to be what is called the ambiguous case. And again, the possibilities are one triangle, two triangles, or no triangles. Not possible to do. Okay, so what are the circumstances that this is, that this is going to come up in? Well, this is going to come up when they give you two sides of a triangle and an angle. So unlike the ones that we did up on the top, they gave us two angles. As soon as they give you two angles, you can find the third. You know you have a triangle. In this case, they're going to give us two sides and only one angle. So they will give us two sides and one angle. Now because of that, <clears throat> the one angle that they give us has to be opposite of one of the two sides. So if they give us sides A and B, 
then the angle that they give us has to be either angle A or angle B in order for us to do this. Um, otherwise, there's, again, there's other methods that we have to look at um, in the next section. But for this case, this is, this is what we have. Two sides and one of the angles that goes with one of those sides. All right, so I'm going to try and use the technology here to, um, to work for me to, to illustrate this because this is not the easiest thing. So I'm actually going to use um, this line segment tool here and see how this goes. So this is what the possibilities look like. And then we'll actually go through some examples to see how we figure this out. So we're going to be given, like I said, you have to be given two sides and an angle that's opposite of one of the sides. So let's say that the first side that we are given is side B. So we'll call that side B. The second side that we are given, uh, let's go back to that tool, where is that? There we go. The second side that we're given is side A. Now, the one thing is, we're going to have a side op, um, over here. This is not side A. I'm actually making this, probably should have dashed this line or something, but whatever. That right there is going to represent side C. We just don't know how long it is yet. So let me, let me represent that with a little C here. <clears throat> so the angle that we're going to be given is in here, that's going to represent angle A. And here is the part that's the um, most difficult to explain without actually using this. So <clears throat> we're going to be given angles, excuse me, angle A, and we're going to be given side A and side B. C we don't actually know. I know it looks like we do, but we don't. So let's say that we are given side B and side A, but this is what happens with side A. Side A, no matter where I put it, let's say it's this length, it doesn't reach where side C is. Okay, hopefully you can see that, that if, I, if they give me side A and it's this long, it's not going to reach where side C is. As a matter of fact, in order for it to reach where side C is, the shortest that this possibly could be was if I were to go ahead and create this as a right angle. So it has to be at least that long. If it is not, let's say that this is the A value that they give us right there, then we would have no triangle. That, that side, that leg, or whatever you want to call it there for A, has to be long enough to reach wherever side C would be. So this is one of those examples where you could possibly have um, information given where you're given two sides and then angle A, but it doesn't actually make a triangle because it's just not possible. And I will go through how you actually figure that out. All right, the second case is uh, sorry about that. The second case is going to be where, um, again, you're given side B. Again, there's going to be a C over here somewhere. And we're going to also be given side A. Let me go ahead and label these real quick. So this is B. This is side C. We're going to be given angle A. And we're going to be given um, side A. But side A reaches exactly to that point right there. This would be a case where you would simply have one triangle. There's no way for us to get a second triangle out of that. And you might still be saying, how in the heck does that work? How do I get a second triangle? I'm going to show you that one on the last one. So let's at least label these two. So this would be, again, this is no triangle because side A just isn't long enough to reach this one, oops, I forgot to label little a over there. Um, the second one would be exactly one triangle. And then the last case is a case where you might actually have two different triangles. So to illustrate that one, 
we're going to have once again here's side B. Over here is side C. All right. Now I'm only going to be able to set this one. Um, I don't know how it's exactly it's going to work, but we're going to try it. So once again, we'll label it. Still got a side B, angle A. Over here is side C. So when we put um, side A in there, again, side A will be given to us. What you should be able to see is that if they give me enough to say that, okay, A could reach here. If I keep this thing exactly the same length, which I'm not going to probably be able to do, but if I keep it the same length, I could also swing this thing around. And when I do, it would actually cause another triangle, which hopefully you can see over here. Now, side C would not be nearly as long for that, but this could cause two triangles. So I would either have one that looks like this, which would be an obtuse triangle, or swinging it around, it would be an acute. Oh, I guess technically they could all be acute, um, obtuse. But anyway, hopefully you can see how it's possible that I could, depending on the length of A, I could have a second triangle. I could have one out here, or if I swing this around, it gives me a really small one over here. So it's possible to have two triangles from this. Let me just see. I'm just going to use another one. So, and what you should see is that this side A is congruent to that side A right there. They are both the same length. So I could have the big triangle or I could have the little triangle that's formed on this one. Try and get rid of that thing right there. All right, so this would be a possibility where you could have two triangles. And once again, the two sides that would be given would be A and B, and the one angle would be A. Or it could be A and B, and you're given B. Either way, you're going to look at them as being kind of in these forms that we have right here. All right. <clears throat> um, because this video will probably end up running extremely long um, to do the next couple of examples, we're going to stop this, and we'll come back with a second video for this lesson.